Hey folks, this is Terry. I'm here with the local and offline collaboration special interest group meeting for August. It's August 21st. And we have a lot of folks with us today, a lot of new faces. So I think the first thing we should do is just do a quick go round. I'll call people out based on where they are on my little Brady Bunch view here. Um, and just tell us in like 30 seconds why you're interested in this like offline first or local first or local collaboration or however you think about this topic. Like if there's a cool project you're working on in the space or whatever, just super quick. And then we'll get going with our the rest of our agenda. So Giannis, you're first on, on my screen. Hello, hello. Hello, I'm Yanis. Um, I am a researcher at Protocol Labs and also uh, academic at University College London. And um, yeah, uh, I've been, I have a uh, long standing interest in um, offline communications, delay tolerant networks. Uh, we've done quite a bit of work on mobile only communications in the past. So yeah, looking to see what this group is up to. Cool. Awesome. I'm Terry. I uh, currently work at Protocol Labs, but I used to work at IBM and I was working with Cloudant, which is like CouchDB as a service, which is great for mobile sync and offline use cases. And while I was there, I was one of the founding sort of co-organizers of Offline Camp, which is all about offline first. My buddy Dwayne here is coming and Luis has been and is coming again. All the cool kids come to Offline Camp. That's not for this part of the agenda. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm really interested in in offline first for those like as a developer just like having and as a user like my stuff should just work that would be lovely so that's my big interest um, and then I was introduced to DWeb through the offline first group and that's how I ended up at Protocol Labs and I build Protoswell which is an educational like tutorials and stuff on DWeb stuff. Uh, Dwayne, you're next on my screen. Yeah, you bet. Um, so I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, at a uh, a uh, place called Medici Ventures, which is a uh, sort of like a research group of small companies that are trying to do blockchain for um, all sorts of governance problems. And uh, I'm in the land governance section, so we're we're actually working in countries like Zambia and Rwanda right now to uh, try to build uh, fault tolerant and um, more. Uh, I guess, corruption intolerant <laughs> um, land administration systems. So uh, one of the things I'm interested in is um, all of the, all of these technologies that are related to um, keeping, keeping software working when somebody is trying to use it in the field in a situation where, where electricity might be on and off, or um, in our case, sometimes the, the servers themselves can be Based on the faces, I'm not the only one who lost Dwayne for a second, but the servers can also be down, I think is what you were saying. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome use case, like really compelling. Thank you. Nico? Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Nico. Uh, I am part of, uh, of uh, the Association for Progressive Communications, APC. Uh, and we have been supporting uh, community networks initiatives. That would be communities in rural underserved uh, countries, uh, sorry, in rural underserved situations in, in general, the global south uh, that decide to provide themselves with connectivity uh, by their own means, with their own hands. Uh, so from the Association for Progressive Communications, we are supporting these uh, kind of endeavors and uh, in that support, uh, we are working with different uh, actors, and one of the actors are the developers uh, that are uh, that doesn't have the chance uh, many times to get in touch with uh, users uh, that, um, in particular, the decentralized web technologies are mostly suited for. Uh, um, so one of the things that we are doing now is uh, to help uh, people like you. Uh, like all of you, uh, to be <clears throat> in touch with uh, users from the Global South that uh, might be uh, needing or willing to work on decentralized technologies um, for their uh, specific use cases in those areas. 
Oh, I saw that you added a note that you want to talk more about that later. So we can do that if we have time today, or we can do it on our next call, whichever whichever works out. Uh, Dominic? Hey, everyone. Uh, I work for Protocol Labs. My name is Dominic. Um, specifically, I work on Go IPFS, and I'm always interested in seeing how we can bring this to new platforms and have kind of like compatibility with all these systems that people are working and building on so that we can kind of enable these offline first kind of um, applications and stuff. And I particularly like coming to these calls to see what everyone else is doing and what problems they may be having. So that's it for me. Yeah, it's really cool to see all the different use cases. Jessica? Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jessica. The cat that just mauled me before uh, departing is named Luna. Um, she is so offline first, she didn't want to be in the room. Um, I came to say hi to everybody today um, because I do work on IPFS at Protocol Labs specifically. Um, I work with Terry and some others in a group that's focusing on our documentation effort right now. Um, and we've hit a point where we were hoping that we could chat with some folks who were passionate about um, the offline first movement to um, which, which I can get into a little bit later. So, so I'm asking for a little bit of a conversational favor with all y'all, but um, I don't want to jump the agenda. So it's good to see so many familiar and new faces here. Awesome. Justin? You're still on. So yes. Yeah, now I'm unmuted. Uh, I'm Justin Mayer. I am a big fan of IPFS. Um, I've made a little thing called Gathering that's offline first, or as best as offline first can be with IPFS right now on, on browsers. Um, offline first is just the way that things should be. And so I'm here to see all the cool development that's happening. And, and it's exciting to, to get updates here. And yeah, it's fun to be part of this. Yeah, and you can see uh, a demo of the gathering that Justin did on this call last month on our YouTube playlist, if you'd like to. Molly, calling in from Berlin, I think. Hey, guys. I'm Molly. I work on IPFS, um, and I used to lead this, um, I guess, SIG monthly meeting before Terry took it over. So thank you, Terry. Um, yeah, and I, I got super excited about um, the offline space because I was working on EdTech tools and got really annoyed that teachers and students couldn't use applications in their classroom without having to ship all of this data that they really just meant to share between students and the teacher and you know use all of this stuff within their own classroom but they had to have really great internet connections which many schools do not have uh, in order to rely on all of these useful um, pieces of technology that many of us rely on in enterprise and, and elsewhere so um, that's what got me super jazzed. I'd love to talk to you more about that sometime, Molly. I work on a, a side project that's related. Hey, you know where you can talk to each other? You know where you're both going to be? Offline camp. Perfect. That sounds great. That's exciting. Love I forgot Molly in my list of people who are coming. All right. I see Dietrich smiling because I know he knows I want him to come. So far, no commitment. Arkady. Hello, so I'm Arkady. Uh, I work on the collaborations uh, at uh, Protocol, specifically on the APFS side. And I guess on a personal level, uh, like growing up in post-Soviet Russia without him having like a phone line uh, and then being in New York with the subway and also just being in nature a lot, it's I have a lot of personal experience with the server not really being something that you can count on. Uh, but also like kind of more seriously, I'm very interested in community networks, as well as things like making IoT not be an utter disaster. So, yeah. Awesome, Dietrich? Hi, everybody. My name's Dietrich. I'm working also on IPFS Protocol Labs. Uh, I'm very interested in using the, the browser to kind of get the last mile solution that letting people do the web and unlocking some of these offline use cases. Uh, I have a, a totally different question on the agenda today. Get to that later. Cool. Uh, Nick? Phoning in? You are muted, Nick. Uh, hello, there I'm Nick. Um, I'm in Namibia. Sorry if I sound a little bit sleepy. Uh, I am a human-computer interaction professor in half my life and the rest of my life. I work with indigenous groups and 
uh, different parts of Africa in rural areas. Um, lots of focus on community networks, um, but I'm calling in today uh, at the prompt of NICO. Um, we've just started a project um, where we're using Scuttlebutt uh, in the Kalahari with um, a group of people called the San, who are um, indigenous, who are allegedly the first people and quite believably so. Um, and uh, yeah, they're very disconnected. They have incredible culture, egalitarian culture, an amazing oral um, store so we are trying to use scuttlebutt for a offline audio uh, way of connecting many villages together that sounds really interesting nice uh jonathan hey uh yeah i work for protocol labs i'm on the filecoin team um, um i'm just curious i saw your uh that signal out in the, the lobby channel uh so i thought it's <laughs> <laughs> awesome, glad you're here. All right, who's going by HSN in their Zoom profile? You're on mute, HSN. Mystery caller. All right, HSN is on mute, so I'm gonna go to Louie. Louie, you wanna unmute and introduce yourself? No. Sorry. Oh, okay. First, I'm actually using the Zoom for the Zoom mobile app. In fact, um, oh, sorry, I wasn't uh, trying to hide from the camera. I'm uh, just about to catch a flight in a second, so I'll probably have to drop off. But I, I run a consulting firm out of Phoenix. I do IoT offline things. Um, and if anybody's going to be in New York on, on Friday, uh, Half Stack New York, I'm going to be doing a talk on surviving the apocalypse with progressive web apps, which um, sort of a mix of uh, Browser tech, um, a little bit of DAP, stuff like that. So, um, and I'll be at offline camp next month. With all the cool kids, very nice. Uh, let's see, we're just doing intros. One more chance for HSN to acknowledge their identity if they come up mute. No. Pooja, do you want to tell us quickly why you're interested in offline and local stuff? Hello everyone. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm part of the Filecoin project. Um, I am mostly just. I mean, I've I've heard you, Terry. Um, <laughs> I know this is like a big part of uh, you know one of your passions, and I've heard you mention it a few times. So I was just generally curious. Um, I don't have like a huge like you know um, other reason for being interested, but I'm I'm definitely really curious. I think it's an important cool thing. So that's great. We love curious people. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not making a lot of stuff work offline these days, but I'm really fascinated by all the use cases. So that's great. Thank you for taking the time to introduce yourselves. I think it's really cool to see like the breadth of projects that people are working on or interested in. I'm going to hop over. I'm actually going to paste the link to our agenda one more time because I think it doesn't show up for people who come later. So uh, let's see what we have on there. We have a couple of kind of short announcement type things, and then we will jump into Yana, Giannis's kind of main part of this talk. So first I will just share slightly more officially what I have been hinting at, which is offline camp, which is about offline first. It is not specific to D-Web, unlike this call where we're really looking at it from the perspective of D-Web. At offline camp, you'll find people who are really excited about D-Web. You'll find people who are doing more traditional like CouchDB, PouchDB, Stack, et cetera. Um, but it's discussion-based, all sort of unconference, picking topics as we go based on who's there. Um, amazing environment, tech retreat over the weekend. We actually had to reschedule it from August to September because of a wildfire in Oregon. And luckily, a lot of our folks were able to stay through, but we do have some empty spots available. So if anyone would like to join us, we'll be in Grants Pass, Oregon, September 27th to 30th. And I will paste a link to the website in the chat here so you can learn more. And obviously, feel free to reach out to me specifically if you have questions. I'm one of the organizers. And we really appreciate that uh, the IPFS team and Protocol Labs is, is sponsoring the event this year, along with Mongo. So that's awesome. Uh, Jessica, let's go over to you for your request. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is super quick. But um, like I said, I'm part of um, the the documentation and developer user experience task force over in IPFS land. And um, as part of that overall effort, we are sort of 
solidifying and putting together a framework of reasons why people use IPFS or want to use IPFS and how that aligns with just sort of you know, their overarching goals, um, the things that we are all each trying to achieve on our own projects. Um, and just as part of that, we want to make sure that we are adequately acknowledging the special needs that people who are focusing on um, offline access need to consider. So with that in mind, um, sometime over the next few weeks, we don't have the schedule pinned down entirely. We would love to have a half hour, hour long, depending on your schedule, phone call with any of you who would like to have a conversation with me and some of my team about some of the research and organization work we've been doing and just to make sure that we are counting your needs adequately and elegantly among all of that. So um, the ask in that is um, I'm going to share a link in the chat to a Google form, um, but then there's also a link inside of the agenda. Um, I would love it. It's just, just once your name and address, your email address, so that I can um, check in with you and, and do a little bit of scheduling. And then also, if there's anybody else you think might be interested in having this conversation with us, please send that link to folks. Um, thanks, Nico. I just saw your note out in there. Um, but yeah, anyone else you feel like forwarding that link to would love to have a chat with them. And, and we really appreciate your time and your thought. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Jessica. I think it's really cool that we're thinking about this this use case as we think about all the all the ways that we're serving different parts of the IPFS audience. Um, all right. Okay, so let's looking at the clock. Let's go with let's go with our our Giannis topic now, our big topic, and then we'll jump over to Nico and Dietrich. So Giannis, you can, uh, if you want to share, you can grab a, grab a hold of the screen to share anything you want to show us, and then we'll spend a little time to ask questions when you're done. Yeah, yeah. So hello again. Um, I'm trying to share my screen. I've got a quick set of slides. Um, Thing is, let me find them. Okay, right. So, okay. So, um, this is a kind of a project that came out of our work. Sorry if it's too loud. I have to have the window open. I'm in a hotel, so um, it's a bit, a little bit loud sometimes. Um, so th this is part of a project that uh, came out of some of our studies at UCL. Um, it's uh, the root of it, the, the beginning of it was uh, the general area of edge computing, so to speak, which is something that we've been looking at the last few years, um, which in a very quick nutshell says that um, with IoT and all our mobile devices that were not around a few years ago, um, now we see more usage of um, whatever our devices are doing at the edge of the network. So you, we want to consume content at the edge of the network, we want to produce and publish content uh, straight from our mobile devices. The same is going to be the case when um, IoT, I mean, uh, a more integrated version of IoT comes around. Um, and therefore, we need to have a way to connect, to, to connect devices um, locally and make them able to um, exchange content between them. So that's how we came up with Data Hub, which is kind of a first connectivity part to the edge computing world. And effectively, um, hang on, uh, okay, yeah, we, we figured out that, um, you know, communicating globally is possible with all the great protocols and work that all the community has done over the decades. Um, and it's quite easy to connect to others that are far away. Um, what has not been done very, um, very efficiently is to communicate locally. So when you want to send something to someone sitting next to you, whether it's a mobile device or an IoT sensor or whatever that is, then 
this is pretty much impossible. You have to ship whatever you have to the other end of the planet, um, to a data center, Google Drive, whatever it is, Dropbox, and then the person sitting next to you needs to pull that off again from the other end of the planet. Um, so what we want to have is actually a platform for distributed ad hoc data synchronization. So one device can publish things and the other devices should, should synchronize and uh, pull this data locally. So you can think of that as a local shared virtual storage um, that needs to work in disconnected environments as well as connected environments. It doesn't uh, make a big difference. Um, so uh, one big part of Data Hub is uh, a connectivity solution, which depending on what you want to build on top, um, at Data Hub, I mean, it could be a library or you know whatever the name is going to be. Um, it's a connectivity solution that can identify when one of the devices in the surrounding area has got something that my device does not. And therefore, in this case, it's going to connect and pull the content that needs to be synchronized between devices. Um, so in order to do, so, so this has been, I mean, in the kind of academic world, this has been, called opportunistic networking or delayed tolerant networking and it has been uh, investigated for more than a decade, possibly quite a bit more. Um, it has not really been, uh, it has not really seen any usability studies or any real applications that are doing these things and therefore we thought that, okay, one way of doing that is to have, you know, an incentivized content propagation platform where you can have a consensus protocol that is using some um, kind of derivative of social capital and then um, be able to reward users for what they're doing for this um, distributed for, for uh, propagating content at the mobile domain. Um, so, so roughly how it works, uh, the networking part, is that we have um, SS, like the equivalent of SSID, where you have, you know, the SSID is what comes out of the Wi-Fi access point. Uh, and is, instead of having a random bit of strings, you can have a hash or uh, the content name. This goes back to our studies, which, you know, it's pretty familiar in this group of people um, of the content addressable web or the content addressable internet. So instead of just connecting to some device, you connect effectively to the content that you want to get to synchronize uh, with you. Um, and um, the way it works, I mean, uh, as I said the previous time as well, there is, uh, it's a combination of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi direct, where there is, um, hang on, uh, how do we do that? Right, uh, where we have the Bluetooth beacon advertisement where you can think of it that um, you take a picture and you want to kind of publish it in the local network and then the other device that is scanning, the Bluetooth low energy device that is scanning, um, not constantly but every periodically, every some time interval, is going to eventually identify the beacon that you're, uh, that, that you're beaconing on the other side and is going to establish a connection. So the way that we do like a, a, li a little bit more technical detail, the, the way that we do that is that we have, we use the characteristic um, field of the Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy um, uh, protocol. And there we put, we use bloom filters. And these bloom filter effectively you, advertise the content that you have, whichever way of naming you want to have, it's a hash function or whatever it's going to be. Um, and therefore the two devices then are going to, the, the advertising device is going to do that and the client device is going to um, check that against its own Bloom filter and it's going to see that there is a gap there because, um, because it doesn't have this content. Uh, upon doing that, then there is a Wi-Fi direct connection, which is established between the two. Um, and the content is effectively, uh, the, there is a, a file transfer that is done from one device to the other. Um, so 
what we also have I mean, uh, as part of the reward system, which I'm not going to go into detail right now, is what we call a proof of prestige, which is uh, a paper we recently published uh, earlier this year. Um, and it's proof of prestige is a, uh, use, a proof of useful work kind of um, uh, protocol that is building on top of uh, proof of stake blockchains. And what we want to achieve with that is to actually prove that two devices connected. So it's pretty difficult to um, prove something. So it's pretty difficult to say that I have connected to some other device without cheating and you know without uh, spinning up like a thousand Android uh, images on my laptop and saying that I have actually contributed because look, I have uh, transferred all this content. Um, and we have what we call proof of prestige is what well, um, is called progressive mining, which means that um, as users are working, are, are distributing content from one to the other, then you have um, naturally dis con um, sorry, content distribution trees, which is from one device to the next and then to the next and then to the next. Um, yeah, so this is part of what this is doing. Um, and okay, I mean, okay, the, the overall thing is quite easy uh, to understand. You, you have some, uh, if there is some application that is building on top of this library, then you have, um, then the application will have to get some uh, memory from the smartphone or the IoT device or whatever that is going to be. Uh, then devices are moving in urban or non urban environments. And when they find someone through this Bluetooth Bloom filter um, uh, matching, they connect opportunistically and they share content. And then there is the reward for that. Um, so in doing that, we found out that there is very little battery consumption. Uh, we have, uh, as I'm going to say in a minute, we have an Android implementation of that, which is, um, uh, it, 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 it uh, consumes less than 10% of the battery for pretty much a whole day. Um, there is no location tracking because, you know, the, the whole point of that is to enable local communication, which means that if we want to share something locally, then this stays local and, you know, uh, nothing is uploaded to central servers. If we want to share meeting material, nothing is going to be uploaded to Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever other thing. And also, there is no there is no consumption of mobile data. Uh, so, for places where uh, mobile data is quite expensive, then distributing content in this way could be much more cost efficient for people. So, so there there are a few use cases that we um, we came up with. I mean, the the main the main thing of that is not the use cases themselves. It's not the applications themselves. The the main novelty is um, the networking library that is sitting underneath. Um, but we found out that uh, if you want to do slide sharing or meeting material in a meeting, then um, you end up in cases where you have to ask for 10 different emails in order to send something over email or get the um, uh, usernames of people's Dropbox accounts or whatever the thing that people are using and then share it with us, um, which is quite impossible to do. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, it's quite painful. Um, so instead, what you can do if you had this kind of library would be that you have a local shared virtual space where everything is replicated between people's devices and um, whoever is interested in what is being published is being pulled transparently to their to their uh, phone or laptop or whatever other thing is going to be. Um, a different thing, very similar, is the local social network where you want to um, share some things from um, from a festival that you've been or a football match or whatever gathering, protest, whatever, um, and you you can you can basically publish content which other people are pulling on their devices. Um, so yeah, so, so we have, um, we have quite a few things done. This has, I mean, it, it has been an academic project for quite a while and, 
Um, we have received some funding for that. Um, so we have the device to device connectivity module. It's working on Android. It must be, um, no, it must be, it is on, on the Android, on the Google Play Store. Um, so if you have two mobile devices, you can download and sync between the two. You can create a group and share things between those two devices. It's quite stable. It's not always working, but it's mostly working. Um, um, there is, we have um, a logging thing, backend logging thing where we want to basically see, you know, when connections are for debugging purposes, basically. Um, uh, there is security, there is, um, uh, I think there is a Linux application uh, to connect also laptop devices and what we, uh, a good idea that um, came up quite recently is to, uh, we've seen the, the need for something like that in lib 2 p to have a different kind of transport where things can be shared locally without the need to go through uh, the whole of the internet um, and that's one of the next steps we want to take um, yeah, and see if that is possible working together with people uh, from uh, Lib 2 p um, Yeah, and I think, uh, let's see, it's based on actually uh, a load of academic publications and things like that. Um, and it's a collection of all of that into uh, one um, library. Yeah, and that's it. Thanks, Yanis. Yeah, Let's, happy uh, to get any feedback or ideas or, um, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, let's take, say, give ourselves a 10-minute cap and throw questions at Giannis or ideas related to this project. Dwayne's asking in the chat if any of this source code is open. Right, so um, uh, it's not open right now. Um, let me stop sharing this. Um, yeah, it's not open right now, but the intention is to kind of um, make the code look a little bit more like what it should be, and then um, uh, show it, uh, open source it, basically. Sorry, I missed the chat messages. Uh, it's a really cool project, Giannis. Super okay. excited. Okay. Um, okay. If, I, if I may have a couple questions. Uh, one, um, have you looked at um, Briar, uh, another similar project that uh, does Bluetooth to Bluetooth communication? Uh, no, how okay. is it called? Pri prior or Briar? Uh, Briar, like Briar Patch, yeah. Um, okay, okay. Uh, uh, also an Android it, it, app. Right, okay. Um, and a uh, uh, second question related to another project. Um, have you looked at, so there's a fellow named Mark Nadal uh, behind the Gun Project. Um, it's a, a decentralized database, uh, sort of, I think most people talk about, um, but he, he has something that he's working on called proof of propagation, um, which is also oh, really? very similar to, uh, I think, what you're trying to achieve with the file sharing um, going in, in loops and things like that. Um, maybe something to look into. Yeah, if you can share the link um, here or the Google Docs, that would be great. I'll uh, have a look. Maybe that my teammates are aware of that, but um, yeah, um, I was not. It's, it's probably, uh, it's funny how many people will work on, like we, we all are working on some of the same spaces and we overlap and don't know it. And you've probably got something unique about proof of prestige and he's got something unique about propagation. And they, they may have some right, Venn diagram yeah. overlap there. Very cool. So I, I've got a few questions too. Um, so this would work awesome for what I was building and what I talked about last time we met. Um, you talked about like a little local social network. That's exactly what uh, we're, we're trying to build. Um, it, it, it sounds like right now it's pretty much something that you would need access to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi direct for. So obviously you couldn't do that in a browser, um, but I'm assuming that we could create some kind of app that would act like a wrapper or something like that that could be using that. Anyway, that was cool. My question was, um, in your slides, you said that it, it used the SSIDs, or, or was that just an example? Um, it, it's an example of what we want to do in some cases, but effectively okay. what, is, what we're using is the uh, Bluetooth low energy, the characteristic field or whatever that is called, and then there is the GATS, the uh, generic advertisement 
product, not the generic business man product, the generic attribute protocol um, that is uh, that's where actually you advertise things. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Magic. Um, yeah, I, I actually wanted to ask a little bit about advertising the content too. So is it basically saying, hey, I have all of these things or is it saying, hey, I, I'm a client, you can connect to me and see what I have? Right. So, so the main thing, the main thinking behind it is that devices should connect only when there is something useful to be shared. Otherwise, it's a waste of time and waste right. of energy. So uh, the thing is that you advertise the things that you want to say, hey, I have got these things here. And then other people will see that and connect. Other devices will see that and connect. So you're advertising as a kind of publisher. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so is that an automatic process? Like is the, is the service doing that or am I choosing what to advertise? Um, it would depend. It's, it's, uh, this is very application specific, I would have thought. Gotcha. So, so if okay. it is, um, it, it, okay, let's choose something simple. If, if we're building a um, local social network, then I take a picture of something if I publish it in the local application of my mobile device, then automatically this is advertised to other people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it could be a closed group of people or it could be an open group of people. It doesn't matter, but that's yeah. how you so, publish. So from that point, after it makes that first hop, does, it, does everybody that it hopped to also say, hey, I have this content or yeah. do they? Yeah, yeah. So, so there is relaying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. And then these and, and the clients don't need... Again, that's application specific, but they don't necessarily need to click and say, okay, I want this or okay, I want to connect to that device. It should be transparent to the user. But again, it's, it, it's an application specific thing that, yeah. So how about identity? How do you know who you got something from? Is it device specific or is it like uh, people have some identity that they can share among their devices? Um, good question. Uh, I, I don't know. It depends what you want to do with it. it, it so would that's depend. kind of application specific as well. I would, I would say, yeah, yeah. So, so if it is something that you want to share with everyone around, then you don't even need to have an identity. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you, you can be anonymous. It doesn't matter. Right. If so it doesn't want, like reference who it, what device it got it from. There's no history as as far as like the no idea. I, ideally not. Ideally okay. not. In the base protocol, not. Um, That's really cool. Um, then, okay. There is an issue if you want if your name is um, X Y Z and you know you claim to be X Y Z in the network. Then I kind of have if we form a group between us to share stuff. I should be able to say that um, someone else is not pretending to be X, Y, Z because I want to come to you. To you. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how this can be done, to be honest. Interesting. Yeah. Um, how has it worked cross-platform? Have you been able to get it to work between iOS and Android or, or are you still like really far in development for iOS? Yeah, no, iOS is something that um, uh, we have looked at recently only a few months ago and um, it's still in, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's the progress, but not much. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for answering yeah. questions. Any final questions for Giannis before we move on? I realized that I skipped over something in our agenda, which was I specifically invited Molly and Arkadi to share if they had any reflections from DWebCamp, which I know they both went to, and maybe some of the others of you were there as well, because we didn't get a chance to have either of them on last month's call. So I was wondering if the two of you saw anything, um, saw anything shared there that's relevant to this kind of offline or local space that you wanted to just mention briefly. Um, so I'm a little sad that Dietrich actually had to drop before this because I think he actually had quite a bit to say. He should have maybe done it under the schedule order. But uh, I have a, a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. So uh, I'm 
people may have already seen this last month, but if you haven't, uh, Berti, B-E-R-T-Y technologies have a, uh, a Bluetooth low energy lip P2P transport, which sounds like it may end up being something that the uh, data hop, for example, uh, will be using. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely check them out. I believe it's maybe is open. The repository has been opened already. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention quickly, which is a very general comment, is that uh, I've so I was doing these kind of uh, user interviews with folks, and one of the questions was so if you had like kind of the magic wand question, like if you was no objection to realism or cost, what is the one thing that you really really want to have working? And offline first was a very common answer. And even when I push people, okay, well, something else, they would double down. So just, you know, take it as encouragement for, for this focus area. Yeah. That was a question about what they'd like to see work better if with IPFS specifically. Cool. Thank you. Molly, Nico did you notice also... any related? Oh, okay. Either. Well, yeah. I saw Nico at DWeb Camp, so he might have seen even even more things no. that were offline related. He was the offline related person I saw. Um, <laughs> there was definitely um, some people who um, kind of came came to camp thinking there was going to be less good internet than there was. It was actually surprisingly good, um, but people were were kind of coming prepared. So there was an offline data swap, so you could kind of bring and share um, data and someone brought um or at least had started working on i don't know if you ever got it quite finished um a an offline um capable i think it was it was a package manager that i'm forgetting the name of right now but it was for rust so is that crates cargo 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 thank you it was cargo so it was an offline um version of cargo on top of ipfs um so that he could bring it offline and then use it with uh, with other people, but they ended up not needing to use it at the end because we had such good internet that people could continue hacking without it. Uh, but that was Sean from the um, Rust Secure Scala community. He like started hacking on it just so that um, people could use it if uh, if we didn't have good Wi-Fi. So I thought that was super cool. Um, and then I've actually been at Web3 here in Berlin for the past week, and um, there's been a lot of really awesome people our Wi-Fi is less less good, ironically, than the Wi-Fi at um at DWeb Camp and IPFS Camp. Yeah. Um, so there's been been some amount of like people talking about this. Um, for example, the the Riot folk are looking at um having a peer to peer way of um maybe over limp P2P of sending messages back and forth. So peer peer to peer riot chat might be somewhere in our in our upcoming future if we can bug Matthew Hodgson to actually make that happen, which would be super cool. Oh, I can also add a little bit anecdotally about the network at DWeb Camp, which was a mesh network that uh, Benny Lau uh, from uh, Toronto Mesh uh, and a whole bunch of volunteers had set up and it worked really great. It was doing, I think, seven hops to the back hall, and it was we were under like 150 milliseconds. It was really, really nice. So if you're curious uh, about that setup, uh, you can yeah re reach out to Benedict. I think there should be uh, documentation going up uh, on the campsite soon, but probably not yet. So what was um one question? What was the seven hops you mentioned? Me oh, so so it was so the site was um on the it was on the Pacific coast, quite far from any actual networking equipment, and there was uh, restrictions on building anything that might compromise the aesthetics of the the vista. So you can't put up anything taller than the tree line, basically. So we were shooting through gaps in the trees to like from one ridge to the next. And so there, and there were, I think, seven of those links. And that had, did not have any issues. The only problem was when somebody unplugged uh, Iraq in one of the rims. And so we lost like one leg of the mesh, but everything else was good. 
Cool. I was actually part of the mesh team with Ben uh, that week, that uh, whole week. Uh, thank Arkady for <laughs> for doing the. Okay, the, please please validate my account. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it was accurate, yeah. accurate and uh, and concise. So actually, I don't have anything to add to that. <laughs> but uh, in regards to the the webcam, uh, I think one of the things that started to come up um, is at least my feeling was that there were like two groups. One were the ones that were more focused on. Like more technical, uh, I, I don't, I don't know if, I, well, there were some people that were more technical and focused on having technical discussions, and others that were more trying to look for conversations that uh, opened uh, opportunities, like uh, understanding the reality of others, uh, connecting with, uh, like there, there were uh, Internet Archive did an excellent job in, well, uh, an excellent effort in bringing people from all around the world to spice up in a way the conference to, to have more diversity, more voices, more people from less, uh, more challenged uh, situations. And I think that's something that uh, we collectively should look uh, forward to and encourage. Um, that's a, in a way, uh, um, uh, I, I, and it would be great if that happens more often, like for example, in, in in offline camp to have people from uh, rural places from other places uh, inspire you all to create solutions for the global south yeah i totally agree it's always been great to have perspectives of people who have worked in so for example we had someone at camp once who worked at a refugee camp in um, africa i forget what country he was working in um but often there's a big problem with like travel costs of getting people who are from those places and we more often have folks who are based in the US but the projects they're working on are there so maybe they've traveled there. Offline camp actually moves around to different locations. So far we've just been in the states in Europe. It would be cool to take it to more less, you know, more remote places than that, but it definitely presents some and I'm happy to support those processes. Uh, I work in in Africa, in, so in, in this I work in these places. I go to the places that I'm talking about. So, uh, if you are interested in exploring both bringing people or getting the events to more remote areas, uh, yeah, I'm your man. Cool. So I think the last. Let me. I'm going to read this question from Dietrich. He can ask it again next week if he doesn't like your answers, but I'm just going to read this question and then I'll let you drop answers in the notes if you have any ideas for him. He's asking if anyone has pointers to systems for secure and audited transfer of medical data using IPFS or something like it. So if you have any ideas there, you can go in the meeting notes in the agenda section. You'll see the question from him and you can drop some suggestions under for him to look at. We'll give him a chance to extend more on that next time. So Nico, question for you. I think I'm just reviewing to see what else I forgot that I was supposed to do. So Nico, we have eight minutes left. Would you like to talk about your project in these eight minutes or would you like to save it for a bigger time slot on next month's call in September? What do you feel like? So we have the, the luxury of having Nick here. That I, Actually, I was going to talk about her work <laughs> i am just a, a a middleman so having nick here i think it's best for her to use those eight minutes and yeah maybe let's do it time we can show a, a prototype or something more yeah concerned. sure sounds good nick? nick let me let's turn it over to you if you have i don't know uh, if you're if you wanted to show <laughs> us anything you can certainly steal control of the screen if you have something you want to show us or you can just chat no, we haven't anything to show yet, okay. um, and Nick has caught me off guard, so he will uh, have to fill in the gaps. So um, we are, uh, I think, um, provoked by DWeb. So um, we were faced, we had a little bit of money from APC uh, to address um, our situation in the Kalahari, uh, where we have um, no connectivity to, at all. Uh, we have a radio station there, but it hardly covers any distances. Um, 40 villages, like I said, very small villages, um, all stand in between, no major roads in between, no tar road for you. You drive for about four hours on the gravel and then you get have to drive another couple of hours 
through the sand. Um, so uh, what we wanted was a, a mule system. Was, we weren't sure how to do it. We've got no electricity. Uh, we have a lot of challenges such as the sand, but also elephants, um, uh, uh, extreme poverty. Uh, Namibia is on the development index as a country is about 5.5, which makes it sort of a lower middle income country, um, but um, the sand people are 3.5. So they really um, struggle in a way that the, the rest of the country doesn't struggle. And we still have only an internet penetration of about 30% of the population. So even as a country level, we're not very good. And then when it comes to the SAM, um, it's just, we don't have anything. And, then, and we have um, people who are literate in the land and literate in their stories and their history, but not literate in um, textual uh, textual um, systems and not particularly familiar with technology after all they don't have the money and they don't have a connection so that's a little bit of our context um, so then uh, Mika and I sort of uh, brainstormed different ways we could do this we started off thinking of some very low fidelity type um, options just sort of basic uh, uh, voice recorders and things and then we moved to the phone because it's obviously the most ubiquitous device even if you can't you can't don't have a sit phone signal so um and then he was at dweb and uh uh and then he was at dweb and he met luandro luandro who's in brazil and he's working on scuttlebutt um platform for indigenous um people there against the very significant environmental concerns that we have been watching on the news and also a couple of guys one a Maori guy and another guy who's a supporter of Maori, Maori people who are also using Scuttlebutt for a cultural preservation project a much longer project so luckily he was able to uh, integrate these people to help us create a proof of concept which is a audio social media system by which uh, uh, through a series of sort of um, naturalistic movements, for example, a conservation vehicle goes out from the small town every so often to fix uh, boreholes, um, to uh, help if there's a massive emergency, although help takes several days to get to people um, and then some other movements like um, rangers who work for um, you know um, tracking animal numbers because it's a, uh, an area of conserved um, wildlife so there are a few movements between villages and people are very used to walking very long way like you know somebody will be will walk 47, 50 kilometers in a, in a, in a day without thinking about it. Um, and so uh, we hope by December that we will have trialed for a month a system but that enables people to, across the course of about two weeks, transfer messages from um, one of the 40 villages to other 40 villages and one of the other 40 villages so we're using it kind of like a radio at the moment we don't the villages share a phone and share a solar system um, when they get them in november and um, uh, they won't have personal accounts um, this is not uh, this is very uh, is not a bad way to start there because of this very egalitarian um, society so um, perhaps just I'll end on, on giving just a little insight um, on when we were there a couple of weeks ago. Um, explain the technology, do some sort of low fidelity prototyping and some role playing and some acting. Um, uh, and people uh, talk about their needs. And so their needs can be uh, something like I haven't heard from um, my family member uh, who lives and is married somewhere else um, for, for many months, or I don't know 
about uh, a school closing because or whether it's going to, uh, because the teachers can't get to it so they send the kids off very long walk to school where they board and then the kids will get there and the school's closed um, or they would like to hear more news from the radio or they just like to share cultural information that's very important for them uh, okay so i get a nice um, heads up from nico that says one minute so i'm going to pass over to nico to uh fill in things that i forgot thank you nick uh, this this is has this has not been coordinated so it's the beauty of working with people that you resonate with uh so um just to fill in the blanks in the technical aspect uh we are using Secure Scarlet as the platform for doing this pigeon network approach, like a, a pass, um, uh, start and forward situation where the devices move around and uh, uh, carry messages from, uh, from one village to the other. And um, there's a specific uh, uh, energy put in you user, user experience because these are communities that don't, don't have much uh, um, ener uh, 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 literacy uh, or no literacy at all. Uh, so the efforts in uh, making the platform usable and also owned by them. This is the, this is the other thing. That the, the platform is owned by the communities. And the, the last thing that I wanted to add is that this is a, a collective effort in between initial, uh, communities that are far apart but close in need. Um, uh, this uh, initiative is being uh, led by, by Nick's team and the need of the, the Sun people, but also uh, is uh, there, there is a collaboration from Luandro from Moinho Mesh in Brazil that I, I put the link to Luandro's uh, Scalobat uh, identity there in the chat and also uh, from Ben from uh, I don't remember which indigenous community in uh, New Zealand from Mix from Scalobat from New Zealand from ja Janastu Mesh community radio from India and uh, there are a few other initiatives that will be joining shortly because this is a need that was that is felt and uh, and the different uh, actors are recognizing their own felt need in the needs of the sun community uh, and uh, from my side it's just uh, about inviting you all to uh, get closer to the communities and uh, count us uh, to support you in that process if interest. Very cool. So uh, Nico and Nick, I just dropped some notes in the agenda as you were talking, but I'm sure I missed things or mistyped things. So please feel free to edit those or add links if there are like ways people could be helping out and somewhere they could go to learn more. Um, that would be awesome. Arkadi, you added two links to the document about upcoming events. Do you want to quickly mention that? Uh, yes. So there's two events that I think might be of relevance to the people here, both like technologically and I think politically. Uh, so there is our networks in Toronto uh, on the 20th to 24th, approximately of 20 to 22nd. Uh, oh, that's the wrong link, I will fix that. Uh, and there is radical networks in New York uh, on the 18th to 20th of October. Uh, and I think both of them focus on uh, uh, a lot of community and network stuff, and they're uh, quite affordable. They're under $100, I think possibly even under 50 uh, So if you're around, come check them out. Awesome, thank you. All right, so... Were, sorry, uh, were those links posted on the document? The event okay. links, yeah, if you scroll down towards the bottom of the agenda document, they're in there. Thank you. And I'm trying to copy things from the chat over to that document as I go to try to make sure we don't miss anything. Um, awesome. I feel like there would be a lot more to dig into about Nico and Nick's project, but this is really cool to hear. Um, so if you think you want to do it like a longer talk or dig into some of the technical details, if that would be interesting to people, we could schedule a 
you for the September call. If either of you are interested in doing that, you let me know what sounds good. Um, and yes, October. Yes, we can make it work for October. Um, it's great to see everybody. I think it's really fun to see all of this stuff. And I'm looking for uh, topics for September. So if any of you have um, projects you're working on that you want to share with us in more detail, it's fun to hear the quick tidbits as people introduce themselves. But if any of you would like to introduce us in more depth to this, uh, one of the projects you're working on, that would be really cool. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah, and I will see you. I, I will double check the dates and post a new issue um, in our GitHub. So the best thing for you to do if you want to make sure you don't miss any meetings is to watch the GitHub repo for this, um, this interest group. And we post an issue there for each of the upcoming calls and also some, you know, discussion topics or announcements of related events or other stuff that this might, group might want to work on together and there is issues. Um, and then I tag frequent people who come when I announce the times. And this call is also on the IPFS community calendar, if you haven't seen that. So you'll see that also in the issue link. Um, anything else before we go? All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next month. Or some of you I'll see. Well, that is also next month. Yes, this call is probably before the event. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.